Debate round two is less than an hour away, and my guess is the 10 candidates facing off tonight have been studying up on last night's film like Tom Brady heading into the playoffs. And the main question the candidates have been battling it out to answer, whose version of the Democratic Party is its future? I think if we're going to force Americans to make these radical changes, they're not going to go along. You, you Throw your hands up. But you, right. ha- you have an in- <laughs> This is an example of wish list economics. I almost wonder why you're Democrats. You seem to think there's something wrong about using, about using the instruments of government to help people. I think Democrats win when we run on real solutions, not impossible promises. I don't understand why anybody goes to all the trouble of running for president of the United States just to talk about what we really can't do and shouldn't fight for. It's time to stop worrying about what the Republicans will say. Look, if, if it's true that if we embrace a far-left agenda, they're going to say we're a bunch of crazy socialists. If we embrace a conservative agenda, you know what we're, they're going to do? They're going to say we're a bunch of crazy socialists. So let's just stand up for the right policy, go out there and defend it. But what is the right policy for voters? Is progressive push from the left really the wave of the future? Or does the New York Times' Frank Bruni have it right when he says Warren and Sanders are, quote, marooned together on Fantasy Island? Joining me to discuss our former Congressman Michael Capuano, now Public Affairs Director at Foley and Lardner LLP. Good to see you. Nice to see you, John. Will Nelia Rivera is founder of Rivera Consulting and Chief Strategist for Congresswoman Ayanna Presley's campaign. Great to see you. Great to see you. Kaivon Schroff is founder of the group Millennial Democrats, also a former digital organizer for Hillary for America. Kai, good to meet you. Great Before to see we you. start, at least one heartening note about democracy almost three million more people watched the debate than the Bachelorette finale. <laughs> so there is some good news. Can I start with you, Congressman? Uh, obviously I was, I was the- watching The Bachelorette. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about that then. Uh, uh, we saw the intra-party fight last night, obviously, Warren and Sanders sort of on one side, not all the eight, but a lot of the other eight. Hacking them. Is Frank Bruni, who is hardly a moderate, I should say, in the New York Times, right? Are they marooned on Fantasy Island? I think that's the question of this whole primary. And what's your answer? Uh, I, I don't go that far. I think that's a little a little extreme, but I have some concerns that we're maybe moving too far to the left. Not for me, but for the American public as a nation. We'll find out. That's what primaries and elections are all about. How about you, Anelia? I agree with the, con- with, the, with the congressman. The reality is, is that right now this is a primary, and in the intra-party fight, I wouldn't describe it as that. I think it's a, it is a battle to actually create a platform for the Democrat. Party, because the reality is, is that we've been under this administration now for three years, and we're not more united as a party than we were three years ago. You know, the conventional wisdom, Kai, is that health care was the issue where we saw what I would consider this divide. Here's a little sampling for people who were watching The Bachelorette <laughs> of the health care debate last night. Here it is. Medicare for all is comprehensive. It covers all health care needs for senior citizens. It will finally include dental care hearing aids, and eyeglasses. But you don't know Second that. of all. You don't know that, Second Bernie. of all. We'll come to you in a second, I do know, and I wrote the damn bill. This notion that you're going to take private insurance away from 180 million Americans, you might as well FedEx the election to Donald Trump. We are the Democrats. We are not about trying to take away health care from anyone. It used to be just Republicans who wanted to repeal and replace. Now many Democrats do as well. I'm on the stage who actually has experience in the health care business. And with all due respect, I don't think my colleagues understand the business. It's option, which is business. great. Is that Fantasy Island, the Sanders-Warren platform? So I think that idea, again, plays into this question of, is the left going too far left? And I think it's a sort of a faulty premise for the question because two things. One, I think it needs to be taken in the context of, compared to how extreme right the Republican Party has gone, relative to that, how left has the Democratic Party gone, and I don't think that left. And then I think if you look at the top five candidates, you have Buttigieg, you have Harris, and you have Biden in that, taking a huge share of the vote. So that's three out of the top five contenders who are definitely, I don't think anyone... But let me challenge you. I'm not sure I would say as compared to the extreme rate. I'd say as compared to the hundred and some million people who have private insurance who need to be reassured, don't worry, even though you like it, most of you, you're not going to lose lose quality health care, and it's not going to cost you any more. Maybe they could win that argument in moot court at Harvard yeah. Law School. I didn't cite that just because <laughs> that, that was a, a poor choice of uh, moot courtrooms. Uh, but, I mean, in the real world of politics. 
But I think, yes, that's what this is about. This is not about some, like, moderate progressive divide. This is about the conversation that the party needs to have. And yesterday, I think they had that card conversation. They started to have it. Most people in the country say they, Democrats say they support Medicare for all, but actually most people don't support getting rid of the private option. So I think people are not understanding what is Medicare for all, what is Medicare for America, that's what are the differences in these plans. What do you Two mean? years ago, Medicare for all did not mean getting rid of health care for everybody else. It meant allowing anyone who wanted to to join. Medicare and Medicaid. By the way, that's what Elizabeth Warren said at a CNN town hall mm -hmm. as recently as two months ago. And that's what it all, I've been on the bill, and, and that's what it's always been. It has only been this get rid of private health insurance in, a few, in the last few months, to my you know, knowledge. You know, the other thing that when you said, well, no, a minute ago, you know, it wasn't a, whatever you objected to, it wasn't a fight, it was whatever. <laughs> it was such a whatever it was. New York Times, Abby, somebody or other, had a great point today. Mm -hmm, They're mm -hmm. fighting over what's the best version to get to universal health care, and not one of them mentioned the fact that while they're fighting over that, the President of the United States is a plaintiff in a lawsuit, or at least supporting a lawsuit, that would eliminate the Affordable Care Act. Is that missing the forest for the trees? Well, I mean, I think that you're starting to, to talk about what the pivot needs to be coming out of these debates, right? Because if I think the, the trap the Democrats can find themselves is having just a policy argument for the next year honestly, about marginal differences when really we need to start pivoting to what it means as a contrast from our, from our opposition. But there's a long time till the pivot. We're months and months away from even the first vote. What I'm vote. suggesting is that we need to start pivoting coming now, out of this second debate. We do, need they to start have to pivot, do they have to pivot on the whole notion, let's pick another one that's tough, decriminalizing those who cross the border. I agree with him. If you had a sane discussion, you could convince most, most people who don't like family separation that that's, we don't need to have a, mm -hmm, it be criminal. Mm -hmm, Let it be a civil mm -hmm, violation. Mm -hmm. But that's not what politics is. How do the Democrats explain that one to the mm -hmm, general electorate? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's pivot time, right? It's pivot time is what I'm saying. That Look, there comes a point where the debate around the issues is good for the party as it's starting to coalesce. But there does come a point when more of these debates, because mind you, they're happening monthly between now and the end of the year. So it's not as if it's happening every other, every other month. So we're basically gearing ourselves up for six, four more months of what this conversation is about. And I think that for candidates moving into the next debate as, they, as those that qualify, they're going to need to refine what their, what, their, what their talking points are. And I also think it's going to be a smaller stage. So the opportunity to provide yeah, more it. of a contrast is going to be different. But the problem is still for those who advocate something that is clearly identified, such as getting rid of private health insurance, such as decriminalizing. And there's mm -hmm. a two or three other items that are clear and unequivocal, and, and they're easy to put on a 30-second ad. Mm -hmm. They're easy to put for, into Donald Trump's mouth in a debate. It's good. It, we cannot make it so that it is a full-blown democratic position. If a few people want to do that, fine. Uh, uh, that's wonderful. That's why we have a nice broad party. But if it becomes the mantra of the democratic nominee, it is a real problem. And I think the pivot that needs to happen right now is stop demonizing the little people that have just little nuanced differences, like mm -hmm. you said. Mm -hmm. That needs to happen now. Because if we keep doing that for months and months and months and say that Biden does eke out a win, but after countless blows, you don't, we don't want that Wait, to be our Wait, is private nominee. insurance versus no private insurance a little nuance? I, I don't think, think it's in the grand scheme of, the of things, the goal has always been to get everyone coverage, and I think people have a disagreement on the timeline of that. You know, you just mentioned Biden. Can we switch it tonight just for a second? Uh, a, one of my favorite pundits, that would be me, said he was finished after the first debate. His performance was so abysmal. Obviously, I was wrong. Can we put up some polling? This is, we compared two polls, which sometimes isn't totally fair, but it's the best we could do. Here's CNN immediately after the debate. Biden has dropped into an almost a dead heat with uh, Kamala Harris, who was obviously the, the actor in that debate. Warren closely behind. Move forward a month to a couple of days ago. Biden has regained his huge lead, 34 percent, to uh, Harris is down to 12. Let's go to African-American voters, if we can, in South Carolina, uh, coming right after Iowa and New Hampshire, the first diverse voting pool primary. Look at this. Biden, 51 percent. Close, this is Harris to 12. Having said all that, if he has, takes a second drubbing tonight, is this guy's candidacy at risk? I think if, if he bombs tonight, people will lose confidence because I think 
on age, rightly or wrongly, that's a concern people have. And so when they're seeing, when everyone's watching somebody on TV perform like that, and he was really reticent and sort of not engaged and not lively and not confident, I think even that is enough to kind of have people question. And then there are a lot of similar candidates, like we saw yesterday, who are pretty center-left or adjacent to Biden on most issues who maybe might start is to Biden risk peel off some or of no? those votes. I think Biden's very much at risk. Why? I, mean, I, I will say that he's at risk because if you actually look at the... At, an aggregate of the polls that have come out since the last debate, he's been going down. Has he ricocheted a little bit up as a bump um, as we were coming into the debate, into debate number two? I'd call 51 to 12 in South Carolina <laughs> more than a bump. Look, a prime, a, I'm, I'm, I'm not looking at primary electorate polls. I'm looking at sort of all of the polls pulled together. The reality is, is that he's been going down and now he's getting a bump right back up. He's the one that everyone's going to be going after on, on tonight's stage. Mm -hmm. And he has the most to lose because his agenda honestly speaks to a vision of who we're doesn't speak to a vision of who we feel and who we relate to anymore you're probably the only one here who actually knows this guy pretty well i mean what's he, does he survive a second poor performance tonight I We'll find out. I think so. I think he's still got the fight in him. Uh, I think the same question was ha was asked of Bernie Sanders before last night. His first debate wasn't That was great. weak. It wasn't it was as bad weak. as Biden's. I think last night he came out last night just as feisty as the old Bernie has always been. And I think Biden has a similar... I don't, I don't but it is about electability, stupid. I don't mean you. No, I mean, yeah, no, no, to I, paraphrase I, I, the old James is, Carville but, but saying. But people want to have somebody that they vote for that they feel comfortable with, not just that, oh, that's the... That, and that was part of Hillary's problem. A lot of people with Hillary probably thinking they were comfortable there. And that's fine, but you need to build on that. You okay. need to build some degree of excitement. And Joe, I think he's capable of doing it. We'll find out tonight. Very quick quiz. Who was the most Googled person during the debate? Who was Marianne that? Williamson. Speaking of her, let's hear from her before we go. Marianne Williamson, candidate for president. If you think any of this wonkiness is going to deal with this dark psychic force of the collectivized hatred that this president is bringing up in this country, then I'm afraid that the Democrats are going to see some very dark days. I, I don't think the Democratic Party should be surprised that so many Americans believe yada, yada, yada. Did this night go the way it hope, you had hoped it would? No, no yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll tell you when, you know later when I see the memes. <laughs> I wish we had recorded your faces during that quick reaction to her. That was Paul Hodes behind her, a former member of Congress. Oh, that's right, New Hampshire. Um, Quickly. I, I don't think America's <laughs> going to go with the California, you know, dark psychic forces. She's not the nominee? I How about not. you, quick reaction? Look, she's you not were the, laughing the she's hardest. She's not the nominee, the but she's pointing the president of something. For, of something. I'm not quite sure Fair what enough. it is, and but you, it's Kai? definitely not the nominee and dangerous to have this platform for somebody like that, oh, really? I think. Because Kai, it's good to see you. Well, because? <laughs> because I think, you know, if you look into her history, there's a lot of concerning things, but like, like you had that piece on reality TV, it's very easy to come across well and likable in two-minute clips. Yeah, but and she's soundbite. friends with Oprah. That's what really matters. <laughs> Will Nelly, it's great it's to pleasure. see you. Congressman Capuano, great to see you as well.